Pastor Jordan. Ohoro. <laughs> For those of you who don't know Kukuyu, Buana Safiwe. I know, I know. I'm here to read the eulogy. It's an honor, it's a privilege to be here. All protocols observed. I'm going to read this like my bishop would want me to. So if my accent is incorrect, I apologize in advance, okay? All right, we're gonna read the eulogy. If I mess something up, just shout it out to me the right way, okay? All right, birth. Bishop Alan Cuna was born on the 10th of December, 1966, in Pumwani Maternity Hospital. Did I say it right? Thank you. Maternity Hospital in Nairobi. He was the firstborn child of the late Joseph Waeri and Kemushe Gathuri Division in Kiambu District. And Lillian Wanjiko from Koronje Village, sublocation in Yiri District. He was the brother to Esther Wambui and William Magua. Early life. Did we get past the first one together? Okay, read it with me, please. All right. Early life of Bishop. Bishop's childhood journey was not an easy one. He grew up in, a, in the rough neighborhoods of Jericho, Maringo, and Kariobangi. Kariobangi. Thank you. Where illicit bruise, drugs, and violence were the norm. He had to learn to take responsibility at a very young age. Even taking up boxing to defend himself and his family, especially his sister, Wambui. However, in spite of all the difficulties he experienced, Bishop did not allow his background to limit or to destroy his destiny, his education. Bishop Allen joined nursery school in Lumbumba, Lumbumba Social Hall in 1972 and continued his studies in both Kalsa Primary School and Uhuru Estate Primary School in 1973 before moving on to Kamathia State Primary School in 1974, where he completed his primary studies in 1979. He joined Afafa Jericho Secondary School in 1980 and later Parkland Boys High School for his A-levels in 1986. Upon completion of this, Bishop Alan Cuna studied to be a certified CPA or certified public assistant at the School of Professional Studies in 1988 his spiritual conversion. At the age of 19, young Allen surrendered his life wholly to Jesus Christ under the mentorship of his spiritual authority, Reverend Teresia Warimu of Faith Evangelistic Ministries. Can we please give it up for Mom Teresia? Thank you, Mom. Who led him to the Lord. This encounter with Jesus marked the beginning of a new exciting journey, sparking a passionate hunger for God, which burned bright within him to the very end. His divinely orchestrated and lifelong connection with God's general, Reverend Teresia Warimu, gave a rise to a renewed mindset and birthed a great compelling vision inspired by the desire to emulate his mentor, his marriage. Bishop Alan Cuna was a loving husband to Reverend, Teres, to Reverend Kathy Cuna. Let me say that again. Bishop Alan Cuna was a loving husband to Reverend Kathy Cuna. They met on December 1993, courted for a year, and were married in December 1994. Together they became an example of, the loving, of a loving couple, a pattern of blissful marriage, and set the pace for couples working together in ministry. They have been the best friends, lovebirds, faithful confidence, and inseparable soulmates who never concealed their deep love for one another, even in the public. Alan and Kathy were happily married for almost 30 years. Can we please give it up for almost 30 years? His children. Bishop Alan Cuna was a very devoted, loving, and present father to Vanessa Wambui Cuna Kovach, Stephanie Wanjiko Cuna, Jeremy Wairi Cuna, and he was the father-in-law to Robert Kovach and Nathan Woolner. He was a wonderful singing, dancing, and loving grandfather to Nia Giselle Cuna Kovach, Amanda Maria Woolner, and Ethan Allen Woolner. His work. Bishop Alan Cuna initially worked in the banking industry as an accountant. He later resigned to start a business together with his lovely wife. Not long after that, the call of God became so strong and evident that they had no option but to close down the business and answer the call. His mission and purpose, the birthing of JCC. 
Bishop Alan Cuna served his spiritual mother faithfully for 13 years, during which time great and noticeable changes occurred in his life, culminating in a tremendous call and the conception of vision. In obedience to God's voice, he stepped out in faith into a path that he had never traveled before to establish Jubilee Christian Church in January 1999. The mandate upon the vision is to teach, train, and equip the body of Christ with the word of faith so that believers can live a victorious life. Making a reality wasn't easy and, he, and required that he pay a hefty price, including being auctioned, experiencing hunger, lack, and utter poverty. Through it all, he believed that, that his God was faithful and would accomplish what he had begun in him. Armed only with a vision and a promise and flanked by his wife herself, an anointed preacher and worshiper, the journey began. The glorious destination of a life journey is never defined by its humble beginnings. By the grace of God, Bishop Alan Cuna was the general overseer of Jubilee Christian Church, headquartered at Parkland, Nairobi. With numerous branches, both locally and internationally, in countries like South Africa, United Kingdom, and the United States of America. The, um, Bishop Alan Cuna distinguished himself as a caring shepherd, prolific author, dynamic teacher, authentic mentor, pastor of pastors, and conference speaker who impacted thousands of people all over the globe. His numerous books, teachings, and newspaper columns have triggered many paradigm shifts within the body of Christ and beyond. With astounding results, to the glory of God, he was consecrated into the bishopric at 50 years of age. Such is a story of a general, a role model, a visionary, a pace setter, and transformational leader whose passion to change lives was evident to all. His impact. We can never have enough gifts, words, or actions to describe the blessing that he was to us. He was a man of integrity, unquestionable character and humility. He cared for the less fortunate in society, going to great lengths to ensure that many were fed, clothed, and educated at primary, secondary, tertiary, and university levels. He was not only committed to God, but to those that God entrusted in him as well. Many are the unknown sacrifices and the acts of kindness that he did, and they may never be documented, but indeed, his life was worth emulating. His illness. Bishop Alan Cuna was healthy all his life until he was taken ill six years ago. About 10 a.m. on Tuesday, 9th of July, 2024, Bishop Alan was called home to be with his Lord and Savior, whom he loved and served since his youth. He went to be with the Lord in the presence of his precious wife, who cared for him with great love and devotion. I want to thank you for joining us today in honor of his timeless memory and to celebrate of the life of this great patriarch. To God be the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's appreciate Pastor Jordan Kanye, Pastor Peter Kanye, and Pastor Jordan Kanye really took good, took good care of our father while he was in the U.S. for a, about a whole year plus. Pastor Kanye, my brother, I don't know where you are. You could stand up. Let's appreciate them. God bless you in Jesus' name. And there are guests that have come together with mom's friends from abroad. One more time, I'd kindly request the international guests from USA, UK, South Africa, Tanzania, Rwanda, Ghana, Nigeria, to kindly stand up as we clap for them. Some of them will be coming to talk to us in a bit, but please stand up, servants of God, men and women of God. Let's clap for them. Let's clap for them. They're in